Okay, so today we're joined by Javier from How Ninder AI, who's created, well, How Ninder AI, which is a service enabling data science in JavaScript powered by TensorFlow.js. Welcome to the show. And first up, please tell us a bit more about who you are and your prior experience with machine learning. For sure. Thanks, Jason. And obviously, thanks for having me. And yeah, I'm a, basically been a software engineer for 15 years. And in one way or another one, I've been working on either data analysis tools or big data tools, and more recently, AI tools. So definitely very happy to be here and uh, being part of this show. Data science and JavaScript, that's a really cool thing. Uh, what inspired you to make this? Uh, maybe you can tell us a bit more about your end goal here as well. Yeah, for sure. So, you know, there was like a philosophical goal in some ways. And, uh, you know, I, f I feel very passionate of making artificial intelligence more accessible to more people. I really feel that that can close the wealth inequality gap and bring more people into tech and why not. Uh, and then more in a short term, you know, kind of like note, I found out that web developers, uh, a lot of them want to do artificial intelligence, but the tools are not there yet. Uh, so it was kind of like an easy startup point for us to focus first on web developers and just make the community and the tools a little bit better. Yeah. Great. And a lot of our viewers might actually be coming from other backgrounds as well. I'm sure we've got some people from the Python world also watching. Yeah, how does this compare to, say, existing tooling in Python for data science? Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, we all know that Python is probably one of the best programming languages to do artificial intelligence. Uh, but I feel like there's a lot of opportunity on JavaScript as an AI tool for deployment, right? So, you know, it's, it, it's, it actually happens to be quite hard to run Python on a mobile device or on the browser. And kind of like JavaScript allows you to build applications either for mobile on something like React Native or directly in the browser and actually simplify your server infrastructure by not having a server or increasing performance and privacy. So that even, even though like Python is considered like a pretty great programming language for AI, I do feel like there's a lot of niche uh, areas where JavaScript really shines. Yeah, definitely these days uh, with people having products in the web world, you can then integrate with those a lot easier than too, which is awesome. So yeah, that's great. So I think it's about time for a demo uh, to see what you can do. Yeah, for sure. All right, yeah. So in this particular case, I want to show you like uh, data analysis that we're doing in HAL 9, starting from scratch. So the first thing that we're doing is we're going to start from a CSV file. And this particular CSV file has all the posts from the Wall Street Bets uh, Reddit group. And you know, nice. there's a lot, of talk of, a lot of talk of GME and AMC and why not. And you know, it's, first of all, you can see that the tool allows you to very easily drag and drop uh, you know, blocks to construct what we call a pipeline. And basically, a pipeline is a data analysis pipeline uh, that we use to import the data, right? That's the first step. So, you know, we can take a quick look and we see that there is 50,000, 52,000 rows, which is, it's a lot for a data visualization. Uh, so to keep things simple, we can also filter this particular data set, right? So we're going to say, don't show me all the records, just show me the top uh, most upvoted titles in, the, in, in this data set. And you know that way we can reduce the size to you know two thousand and you know two thousand and something rows, and now we can kind of like okay let's take a look and see if we can build a little visualization right just to get a sense of how the data looks like. We have a bunch of different visualizations, but you know like one of the common ones is the scatter plot, which is literally just dots over a matrix of x and y coordinates, uh, but still pretty useful because you know it can show us that there's there seems to be two groups of posts here right uh, one of them with very little comments and the other ones with you know average comments but they have the same amount of upvotes so you can you can probably imagine that the one of these data sets is probably a lot of memes and a lot of like gifs where you know it's not there's not a lot of comments but it has more votes and why not uh, yeah i love how easy it is to kind of drag and drop things into the flow there and then get the instant visualization of that all in action that's super super cool yeah we're really trying to make it super easy for yeah. web developers to not have any fears of data science. So we, we also believe that the blocks really help you kind of like uh, cross that barrier uh, pretty, yeah. pretty smoothly. Yeah. You can focus on the data, which is yeah, for sure. very yeah. useful. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then, yeah, what we're doing now is we want to see kind of like how the GameStop stock compares with other types of posts. So we're just asking on the title, we're just scraping the title to say, if the title contains the words GME, call it, you know, a GME type of post, otherwise call it other, right? And that that should help us, you know, kind of like build our visualization to see if there, if we see some patterns on, you know, different types of, uh, you know, behavior between different posts. And, and here what you can see is that, Honestly, both of them look pretty similar. You know, like you see this pattern where, you know, like 
uh, there's posts with a lot of comments and the other ones with, with medium comments. So nothing, nothing super interesting. But, but now we can start looking at you know, using TensorFlow.js to actually figure out more interesting uh, bits and pieces on, on this data set. So we're going to drag the sentiment block. And basically, the sentiment block uses a TensorFlow pre-trained model from the TensorFlow GitHub repo that basically analyzes if each post is positive or negative, right? So you know, uh, we, can, we can do that just by drag and dropping. But really, what is happening behind the scenes is TensorFlow is, uh, you know, categorizing what type of post it is. And that's, those are the sentiment scores that come directly from TensorFlow. So you know, like all the magic is done by TensorFlow. And that score tells you basically 0 is something very negative, probably some profanity involved as well. And then 1 would be something very positive, right? And, okay. and then we can basically use that data to do another scatter plot. And then here we're starting to see some interesting things. Like it almost looks like a, like a little you know, like U-shaped uh, uh, you know, uh, graph, where you know there's a lot of uh, upvotes for things that are very negative and very and, lo and lots of upvotes for things that are very positive, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, we all know that social media gets tends to get polarized. So maybe yes. this is yes. maybe this is not that surprising, but definitely, you know, with TensorFlow, you can figure figure these yeah. things out. Yeah. So this is very interesting to see um, by applying the sentiment analysis using TensorFlow.js, we can now kind of uh, you know pull out these kind of outliers, if you will, on the two edges there, which, as you said, like. Uh, is a, is a link to the kind of polarizing opinions on social media of uh, very negative and very positive uh, extremes there. And it's very visually seen in that. That's and, very and then the last thing that we can do is we can drag the, the number of comments to the size of the bubble, right? And mm -hmm. this, is, this is actually showing something interesting that it's a bit different from the rest of the stocks uh, that are being talked in Wall Street bets, right? So the orange one are the other ones. And you can see that there's a lot of comments, like the bubbles are bigger yeah. for the posts that are positive. Uh, mm -hmm. Not so much for the negative ones, but for the GME ones, for whatever reason, I, which I don't know why, but they seem to be there. Seem to be also a lot of engagement from the community on negative titles, right? So maybe maybe the community is trying to defend the stock, or maybe they get passionate about it. Yeah. But there's definitely like a, quite a significant difference on on the type of number of comments that go in relation with negative uh, posts. So that that I find interesting. And, and honestly, this is the way that you do data science. You play with the data, you explore it, you use tools like TensorFlow to actually try to figure out how 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 the data, what the data is telling you. Totally, yeah. And it's, it's good to be able to, you know, have that playfulness when looking at data. Often, uh, uh, many of us are used to command line interfaces and uh, getting the standard deviations and the means and all this kind of stuff uh, for the various uh, columns and all that kind of thing going on there. Um, but this really brings it to life a lot more and might uh, spark other ideas in your mind as you see it visually represented like this in, in real time. Uh, yeah. I think that's very powerful. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, and lastly, but not least, I think one of the most interesting features that we have on HAL 9 that is really enabled by TensorFlow.js is that you can you also have access to the entire code behind each of the blocks. So you know, as you can see, you can modify the opacity of this particular chart and you know customize it to whatever degree you want. Or you can go back to uh, the previous sentiment analysis block. And actually, here we're scrolling and looking at the TensorFlow.js code, right? So, you know, you can see how we loaded the model, we how we are transforming the text to actually push it into the model, and then you finally see TensorFlow.js uh, scoring the model. And this yeah. is something that you know, it's it's first of all, it's a great learning tool because you know it it gets you to do things without code. But secondly, you can also learn and modify it to your heart's content. Yeah, that's great. And, and yeah. So this tool is like clearly really easy to use, and uh, I love how you also expose the raw code that's being generated behind the scenes so that, that can be tweaked by anyone, more advanced users, for example. Um, so there's something for everyone there, no matter what skill level you're at there. If you're more on the coding side, you can get down into the weeds, <laughs> and if you're more uh, higher level, then you can just play around with these high-level features as well. I was wondering on this, um, you know, is there an upper limit on how much data you can actually import into this system? Yeah, I mean, well, definitely, you know, with a no, with a big enough machine, right? It shouldn't be an issue, right? <laughs> but like, uh, sure. you know, definitely, you know, we've we've been working with you know ten thousand, you know, fifty thousand row uh, okay. rows on 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 JavaScript, but uh, recently we started investigating uh, this tool and library called Arcaro.js. So mm -hmm. uh, by default, JavaScript uh, works with data in a row format. Uh, but our Carrot.js actually supports a columnar, uh, you know, structure of the data, and okay. we've been able to do uh, data analysis with up to a million rows uh, on our Carrot with no problem, which is is actually kind of interesting. So uh, one features, of the yeah. new features that we're planning to integrate is convert all our blocks to use our Carrot to let users 
uh, use bigger data sets. Uh, but you know, in general, this is something that we're very passionate about, trying to push the boundaries of you know, how much data you can process with JavaScript in combination with TensorFlow.js. Uh, so definitely, we're looking forward to connect to the community. Um, if you want to Thanks. contribute, uh, you know, self-promotion. We have a GitHub repo with our code available where, you know, uh, developers listening to this, uh, you know, episode like can join us and contribute and, you know, propose fixes, open issues, and definitely make make this of a, more of a community effort than, uh, than what we're currently doing. Yeah. Wonderful. That's really great to hear. And, and yes, on that note, I've also seen uh, other things like Danfo.js also being produced from the community as well. So there's definitely an interest in replicating some of this tooling we've seen in Python in JavaScript. Um, so hopefully all of this will grow together and make some very powerful systems in the future. Yeah, we're, we're definitely also super excited about Danfo.js. Uh, you know, definitely, you know, it's another project that the community could help out. Uh, we definitely, you know, are, are a bit understaffed, but we're waiting for the opportunity to also contribute to Danfo.js. Really cool. Uh, so what type of models do you actually support that presence in the how9.ai system? Yeah, for sure. So let me show you some of them, uh, Jason. Uh, definitely, we have some of them, and we're looking forward to work with even more uh, with, together with the community. But for instance, uh, you know, we have one example of Bitcoin pri price prediction. Uh, it doesn't really matter whether you're using Bitcoin or not. But what is really interesting is that uh, you can use an LSTM model, uh, which stands for long short term memory, which is one of the best poke models for doing actual uh, time series analysis. So here, what we're doing is we're actually doing the training. Uh, it's a TensorFlow, you know, code that you know it's all based on TensorFlow.js, obviously, and it helps you train that particular model. So, so that's one of the cases, which is probably one of our most advanced models. Yeah, uh, I but, think that's very useful as well because uh, time series data is often very common in like you know, real world situations. <laughs> so, I think this could be very interesting for our users too. Yeah, no, for sure. So we we have those type of models. Then we can also do some image processing. So, for instance. Uh, we can do image classification uh, by, you know, with MobileNet. So, mm -hmm. for instance, what we what you're uh, looking at here is we have different images. For instance, in this case, it, it, you know, it's uh, it looks like a cat, uh, even though it's, <laughs> it, it's being recognized as a cheetah, which I think it's, it's a fair <laughs> fair suggestion. Uh, but yeah, so you can also use MobileNet and take a look at you know the TensorFlow.js code that uh, kind of like powers this, and you can very easily, you know, connect to different types of sources of images and classify them. Mm -hmm. And you know you can also do more simpler stuff, but I think it's it's as interesting. You can also do things like, uh, say, figure out how the temperature are changing over time in our planet, and do some regression models. So, for instance, in this particular case, we are uh, we have a simple uh, exponential regression. You can mm -hmm. choose from, say, linear or logarithmic or power or why not, and then you can project kind of like temperatures into the future. And you know, mm, to, nice. to whatever yeah. degree you want, yeah. And again, what is what is really interesting is if, if we if we take a look at the TensorFlow code, all, all we have to do is, for instance, in this case, give the equation to TensorFlow, which is mx plus b, which is uh, you know the intercept. Mm -hmm. And then basically, you know, that that uh, TensorFlow does all the magic to actually optimize the equation and find you a model that fits. And mm -hmm. it's doing all that in in real time, right? So you can see how. Uh, you know, it's feeding feeding the data, and it's doing it through gradient descent, which you know I'm sure some people on your channel are yeah. aware of. And again, like all the heavy list lifting is being done by TensorFlow, but you get to do data analysis in the browser in a very easy to to That's do way. That's interesting. Yeah. So in, in this in this situation, you, you can actually define any equation and it will try and fit the best values for the parameters of that equation for right. the data yeah. that you're presenting to it. Which is yeah, for sure. I mean, and it's yeah. you know the simplicity of TensorFlow makes it so such that you can you know define your own equation and you know like honestly, TensorFlow doesn't care about the complexity. <laughs> and tools like Gradient Descent are pretty great at dealing with very complex models. So nice. yeah, you can expand yeah. also this pretty easily uh, if if some of some of the listeners are. Have have a, a keen eye for mathematics for sure. Sure, yeah, something for everyone. <laughs> yeah, I, I like know. It. Yeah, amazing. So now, if people want to try this out for themselves, how can they do so? Yeah, so uh, hoping that you can uh, take a look at the hal 9ai webpage. Uh, basically, there you have access to the tool, which is completely free after you log in. And you can also look at scroll all the way down to our social media links, and you can contact uh, get in contact with us in GitHub, in Twitter. Uh, we even have a TikTok account where we're trying to make uh, data visualizations fun. So definitely, if you're into that, uh, we're looking to forward to connect with you in whichever social media platform you're at. Excellent. So do go connect with them, everyone. And remember, if you've got questions, you can add a comment down below as well. So with that, thank you for being on the show. And I'm super excited to see this area grow. Thank you so much, Jason. And see you soon. <laughs>